Hello, my name is Danny Nolan and I'm the Director of Chassis Sim Technologies. In this latest Chassis Sim video tutorial, what I'd like to talk to you about is the Chassis Sim Optimization um, Toolbox. Now, this is one of these tutorials that I've been a little bit reticent about doing on the simple principle that the Optimization Toolbox is a very, very powerful toolbox because it's a toolbox that allows you to hit a button and what it will do is it will take your given circuit and it will actually determine what the optimum setup for that particular circuit is, or at least point you in the right direction for what that optimum setup uh, should be. The reason I've been a little bit reticent about doing this um, as a tutorial is on the simple principle that this is a toolbox that actually has great potential to be abused. So before I talk about the mechanics of driving the toolbox, let me give you some caveats. First things first, before you even think about using the optimization toolbox, make sure your model is sorted. And I mean it is absolutely sorted. One of the corollaries of Murphy's Law, of everything that can go wrong will go wrong, is that if you haven't done your modeling process properly, what will happen is that the optimization um, toolbox will exploit the weaknesses in the model because bottom line, the optimization toolbox just cares about what the fastest possible lap time is and it will do everything in its power to ensure that's possible. And if there is a weakness in your model, if there's something that you haven't considered, then it will exploit that. So consequently, I always advocate with the optimization toolbox before you use it, make sure that you've got a great deal of confidence in the model before you start using it vis-a-vis. -vis, you've already done it in terms of um, in terms of uh, in terms of manual sweeps, you know it's point and you know it's pointing you in the right direction. The second thing that I will say about the optimization toolbox is that you use the optimization toolbox as a design tool as opposed to right, here are the results, we'll bolt them straight on the car. The way the optimization toolbox was designed is it was designed as a tool to point you in the right direction as opposed to being this manner from heaven that you instantly click a button and um, it solves all your problems for you. And quite frankly, that goes to, uh, that is exactly the same process for any other computational software that uh, that you will use. So make your uh, so uh, make your peace with that and the reason i mentioned that is that one of the disturbing trends that i have seen recently is that you have a lot of people is that you have a lot of junior engineers who will want to use the optimization uh, who, who want to use something like solidworks like chassis sim they've got a problem they input all the parameters they hit a button they hope it solves it for them well quite frankly the world doesn't work that way and anybody who does tell you the world that works that way quite frankly they're trying to sell you so, uh, they're trying to sell you something so that all being said one thing i will say when used to proper effect the optimization toolbox is a very, very, very powerful tool. So let's get started. So you go to the simulate, you go to optimization options. So what we've got here is that you've got three uh, par uh, free parameters with the car that you can um, optimize. The first parameter that you can optimize is your aero. Now, you'll see here with um, the aero, we, ba uh, we choose an aero balance offset and we choose a CLA max to search, uh, to search in. Now, all of the controls in the optimization toolbox are set up by by uh, by specifying a search range in uh, which um, to search in. So, for example, with my arrow balance offset, I've basically chosen between minus four percent to plus six percent of um, arrow balance offset to search in. So that's the equivalent of I've of basically changing your front and the rear wings to um, move um, uh, that arrow balance offset. The other thing is that we choose a maximum a CLA max in which to search for. Now, with regards to um, setting up for the arrow balance uh, for um, uh, the arrow setup optimization, if you click on the rear wing, you'll um, click here for uh, uh, you'll click here for your drag table. Make sure you fill the uh, make sure you fill that in. So what you're doing here is you're plotting the CLA max max versus CDA max. So this column here is CLA max, this column here is CDA max. So that way you get a really good feel for uh, for uh, what's go uh, you get a really good feel for what's going on. So that basically covers the arrow optimization to enable that you simply click on one. 
Now, um, for your mechanical parameters, you've basically, you search between a front bar rate and a rear bar rate. You, you specify a front camber and a rear camber space and a front spring and a rear spring um, rate. Now, I should state that um, all bar rates are entered in newtons per meter. I cannot stress that point highly enough. So once again, like with um, the arrow balance offset, we specify, uh, we specify a minimum bound and a uh, we specify a minimum bound and a maximum bound. And to enable that, all I do is click, uh, all I do is uh, click on one. Now, for this particular example, I'm going to walk you through. I'm not going to do the mechanical optimization. I'll um, uh, just uh, click on zero for the time being. Now. What I, uh, what I do want to talk about is the crown jewel of the optimization toolbox, which is the damper optimization. Now, what we do with um, the damper optimization is we basically use a dual rate um, a damper model to basically come up with a, um, a, da a damper design. So as you can see, what I've done here is I specify a low speed front bumper rate, a uh, maximum high speed bump rate, and I specify an initial search space. If you've been using um, the uh, nonlinear lookup table for your dampers, what I would suggest is you specify a minimum and a maximum. And for your initial setup, you pick uh, uh, you pick something straight and uh, you pick something straight in the middle. And to an extent, chassis sim will do this by default for you. But I really wanted to mention that. Now, um, so we specify a search uh, a search space for our low speed rates, and um, we specify a search rate for our high speed uh, for our high speed rates and we enter our our bypasses here in meters per second I cannot stress that point highly I cannot stress that point highly enough now effectively just to walk you through the sort of damper model that we'll be optimizing if we click on dampers this is an example of a bilinear rate model just to accentuate that what I might do is I'm gonna set that to um, uh, let me set that to um, tw uh, let me just set that to 20,000 for you so you can actually get a bit more of a feel of what this thing actually looks like so as you can see here we've got a low speed rate and we've got a high speed rate and we've got a bypass this is the things that we uh, 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 this is uh, the things that um, uh, 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 this is the things that we are optimizing here so um, it's a simple uh, once again it's a simple model but the whole idea of the the damper optimization it's a tool to point you in the right direction because when we talk about dampers, particularly once we're starting to generate downforce, what we'll always be doing with dampers is a trade-off between what we're doing with our aero setup and what we're doing with, with our mechanical setup. And the great thing about the damp, about um, the damper section of the optimization toolbox, is that it's a really, really good tool to allow you to do that. So what I'm going to do now is we'll go back to optimization options okay so we've set up an arrow run and we're going to do a damper run and i'm going to click on okay i've loaded in my circuit and uh i've, I've loaded uh, I've, I've loaded in my circuit so i click on the start button and what i'm going to do is click on the start simulation button now what this is going to do is this is basically going to go through and run um, uh, the uh, lap time simulation for your particular circuit, but it's going to do it. Uh, uh, but it's um, uh, going to do it over and over and over again. Now, the other caveat I will say about the damper optima about uh, running the optimization toolbox get a fast computer this is going to take a while this is not one of these jobs that you click on the uh, start simulation button and you um, walk away and you come back five minutes later if you've got a low speed if you've got a low is an overnight job um, in some uh, in some cases depending on the length of the circuit it can take up to um, about a day so really if I were you I would be running this uh, 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 I would be running this on a, uh, I would be running this on a um, dedicated on a dedicated workstation. Now, that also illustrates another point that to make sure that um, you don't repeat my mistake here, what we've got to do is you click on the optimize flag first. So we click on um, the and the uh, reason I illustrated that was for twofold. Number one, I forgot to do it, but number two, it's a common mistake that uh, I often see in people uh, running the optimization toolbox. So we make sure we click on the optimize uh, toolbox there. So we click on start simulation, and now it's going to go off and do its thing. And uh, so what we'll do is um, once again, this is an overnight. Uh, uh, this is an over. Uh, this is an overnight run. So it's going to go through and, and it'll do its thing. Now the difference that you'll uh, the uh, the difference that you'll see 
is that it'll be doing multi uh, it'll be doing multiple lap times and let me just um, pause for a moment so you can actually see what's actually going on so we're getting to the end of our lap time simulation and you'll see here that you've got an initial fo there what it's now doing is it's now going through and um, uh, do, uh, it's uh, now going to um, uh, go. Uh, it's now going to go through and basically do its. Uh, it's now going to go through and do its bits uh, and uh, do its bits and pieces. So um, uh, what will uh, so what will happen is it will keep on doing it. And as I said, it's something that um, you set um, uh, for a uh, uh, you set for an uh, set for an overnight run. Now, just to give you an illustration of what the end process looks like. When you get done, what you're going to do is that you'll wind up with basically it'll spe it'll specify what the optimum lap time was. Now it'll be, now when you've gone through and done your process, it'll um, go through and actually tell you what the optimum lap time is. And here it'll specify what the aero setup was. It'll specify what the mechanical setup was and it will specify what our damper design was now let me go through in an illustra uh, let me go through and illustrate how you would actually go through and enter um, that uh, how you would actually go through and um, enter that um, damper setup it's actually really really easy what uh, uh, what you do is you go through and uh, basically what I'll do is I'll copy this and um, uh, what I'll do is I'll paste it to a notepad file. Now, I've actually um, uh, I've actually done this uh, I've actually um, done this a little bit earlier with an example I did. So let me just go into my data folder, and I'll go into my mod, uh, my Motec folder, my log data folder, and so here was the circuit I was simulating. Okay, so what I've done is you can see here that uh, for the optimization that I did was um, I've copied in my arrow settings and uh, my high uh, and my high speed settings. Let me walk you through how you go about entering this into chassis sim. It's actually really straightforward. So what I do is I'll um, uh, click on cancel here. Now for my arrow setup, what I'll do is that I'll open up my notepad file and you can see that my um, arrow offset was 0.06. So I just simply click on my rear wing and I set my arrow balance offset to 0.06. And what I then do is I go back to my notepad. Okay, so I've got my CLA max at 2.87. So I copy that and I enter it, um, and I enter it um, into there. Now, what I do with my CDA max is then I'll just uh, click on my drag table and I'll see where my 2.87 was, and that's about between 0.852 and 0.885, uh, 0.885. And just as a rough rule of thumb, I'll just enter in 0.87. So um, it basically it moved the arrow balance forward, gave me a little bit more downforce, and I'll click on OK. Now here's um, uh, 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 now here's um, the kicker. Let's now go through and enter my. Uh, uh, let's go through and um, enter the damper setup. Now you'll see here that I've got my optimum low speed settings, my optimum high speed settings. Okay, this is the front bump. This is the front rebound. This is the rear bump and that's the rear rebound so all I've got to do is click on my front damper click on damper click to make sure that I've got my uh, dual rate spec enabled and all I've got to do is copy the numbers in so all I'll do is just I'll go copy on that and if that doesn't work all I've got to do is go 7423.3 and I'll just simply go in here and type in my 3429 Oh, ooh, uh, uh, um, uh, 3429, I answer my bypass, um, uh, what uh, I had entered as my optimization toolbox, and I click on uh, 25, and I do exactly the same thing here, 8804, 3301, 25, and I click on OK. And then what I'll do is I click on my damper tab and I do exactly the same thing for the rear. So I t uh, type in 7,000 for the rear. Um, 3301, which is this little, uh, 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 3301, which is this little puppy here. I make sure I've got my bypass in. 
and uh, I enter in my low speed uh, rebound rate at 86.58, my high speed bump rate at 32.36, and I put in uh, and um, I put in 25, and I click on OK. And just to show you what these dam optimized dampers look like. That's basically what these uh, what these optimized dampers look like. Now, just to show you a before and after shot. Okay, what we've got here is this is basically our baseline run. So as you can see, it's a pretty bumpy circuit uh, um, and a pretty simple circuit. Let me now show you what the optimized uh, what the optimized setup looks like. Now, as we can see, our baseline setup was um, a 102.3. Our optimized setup is a 101.6. So as you can see, there's a very, very big gain. But the great news is, take a look at this. The baseline was uh, colored. The optimized setup was black. And as you can see, this is an example where the optimization setup has worked, and it's worked really, really well. Have a look at this. There are no big differences or no big spikes in terms of what the lap time simulation is doing. When you're looking at something like this, you know that is a valid, uh, uh, the optimization um, toolbox has worked something really, really, really well. I would look at something like that and I would actually consider seriously testing this on the car. And the reason I uh, test it uh, seriously on the car, as we can see, there are, if we take a look at what the speed trace are doing, what the steering trace is doing, there's been no big spikes in the changes. If we take a look at the C time plot, it's picked up time everywhere. When you see that, you know you're dealing with a really, really good change. And that is really the resonant power in the optimization toolbox. So just to review about the, uh, just to review about uh, the chassis sim optimization toolbox. First things first, you only play around with it once the model is sorted. So I cannot stress that point highly enough. Secondly, to use the optimization toolbox, you basically specify a search a search range in which you're looking for. Remember, with the arrow optimization, make sure that you fill in your CDA uh, that your CLA versus CDA max ta uh, table first. I cannot stress that point highly enough. Then what we do is we specify a search bound in which we're uh, in which we're looking for. So we specify a minimum and a maximum in which to search for. Remember, for the dampers, we are using a um, a, a dual rate model. So we specify a bypass. We specify a minimum uh, uh, damper rate in newtons per meter per second and a maximum damping rate in newton per meters per second. If you've using a non, if you've used a nonlinear lookup table, uh, uh, choose a point that's a uh, that's um, that slap bang um, in uh, uh, that slap bang in the middle. Make sure we turn these flags to one and one, and uh, click on OK. Don't worry about the don't uh, uh, don't uh, worry about uh, with the monoshock flag. You only specify that if you're using a, uh, if you're using a monoshock. So we um, uh, 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 so you click on OK to optimize. You click on optimize. You click on the start simulation button, and you let it run overnight. Also, to make sure that you use them, if you're going to use this regularly, grab the gruntiest computer you can grab, uh, you can get your hands on. And then, lastly, when you're done, you copy the results into a text file, and then you basically enter them into your car file, and then you basically save the car. Uh, then you save the car file. And also, too, what you're looking at for a result is something that's a clear and consistent change. If you use the optimization toolbox this way, it will be a very, very powerful tool that will point you in the right direction. It won't give you the magic setup from on high, but it will certainly, if you're in a rut and you don't know what to do, this is a very, very powerful tool. But look, don't take my word for it. For those of you who are using the full version of Chassis Sim, Give this a run for those of you who are using, um, who are trialing chassis sim on Elite Online. Um, then, uh, by all means, give this uh, give this a run and find out for yourself what a powerful tool this can be.